So in this paper, we would like to explore how the British Museum has been using digital technology in connection to research projects and collections over the last four years, focusing on how digital can enhance our understanding and preservation of our archaeological research. We will be highlighting some of the achievements of the key projects listed here, as well as some of the struggles that have arisen, particularly in connection to the dissolution of the digital team and more importantly to this paper, Digital Humanities at the British Museum over the last year. In the course of the digital work we have undertaken over the last four years, the underlying theme has largely been how can we use digital technology to democratise access to archaeological and museum collections, as well as increase public awareness and knowledge of our collections. The emergence of digital humanities tools and resources in connection to now widely available web technology has offered cultural heritage institutions an unparalleled opportunity to engage with researchers and the public in new and exciting ways. Nearly all UK-based funding bodies now require publicly accessible outreach, impact and engagement, which are increasingly via digital outputs. It has become essential to curators Curate, curators and researchers across the museum sector to prove the impact of their research. Arguably, digital public engagement is now a core activity of all museum work. Perhaps even more significantly, the Department for Digital Culture, Media and Sport, the UK governmental department overseeing cultural institutions, recently added digital to its name to highlight its growing importance to the cultural sector. In April 2017, Culture White Paper, they identified key goals focusing on digitisation and accessibility, digital and community engagement, and the employment of new mediums and innovation to ensure resilience of cultural collections. These goals are for UK cultural institutions to implement in order to close cultural and digital divides across the country and beyond. Despite these lofty goals being put in place by the government, it is still very much up for debate how to go about doing this, but it is clear more funding and effort is now being put into the digital cultural sector. So turning now to the digital research activities we've been doing at the British Museum over the last four years, this has ranged from digitising archives to making 3D models and immersive AR, VR experiences. Much of this work started with Micropasts project, an AHRC-funded collaborative project looking at new ways of engaging the public in archaeology. Micropasts employs an open source crowdsourcing platform in order to solicit help from members of the public, also known as citizen scientists. This brings together full-time academic researchers, museum staff, volunteers and a range of interested parties in order to collaborate on projects that have previously proved difficult to publicise despite their potential worth and perhaps because of the difficult nature of the task at hand. So here is the main page of the Micropass website featuring different crowdsourcing projects broken down into bite sized tasks. The central crowdsourcing projects have been related to the National Bronze Age Index which is stored at the British Museum. It is a card catalogue of Bronze Age implements, weapons, tools and ornaments found in collections from all over the UK and Europe. It's over 100 years in the making and the closest thing we have to a national database of archaeological objects before the development of the Portable Antiquities Scheme in the mid-90s. And although it represented one of the best resources for the study of the British Bronze Age, it's not been widely accessible as it was stored off-site uh, in a BM facility pictured here. So this is why the digitisation and transcription of the archive has been key to increase the accessibility to this important data set. And here's an example of some of the cards from the index, which are handwritten with um, drawings directly on the index cards. So each of these cards was captured and scanned and transcribed on the Micropass website via structured data capture. Um, the transcribed data was then uploaded onto the site where it is always available to the wider public. Additionally, the scanned cards are available on our Flickr page with the data backed up onto GitHub repositories and all the final data being deposited with the Archaeological Data Service. So by digitising and crowdsourcing the transcription of this archive, we now have 
the possibility of working towards a total data set of prehistoric metalwork finds that is open and searchable, combining and comparing portable antiquities scheme and Bronze Age index data, enhancing a massive public archaeology resource. The Micropass project was also starting to experiment with creating 3D models of objects, asking people to help us in specific stages of the model creation. And since then, we have massively expanded our 3D work, producing models for exhibitions, research projects, collections, research, and social media. And a key part of this has been using Sketchfab, which is a specialist online platform for 3D content. And we now have 243 models and nearly a million views on the platform. So one of the best functions of Sketchfab is it allows us to annotate 3D models in order to give a virtual tour incorporating images and audio as shown here. This new way of online creation of museum objects is incredibly useful for public engagement because the models can be easily embedded in other online platforms and combined with other content. And one of our most successful models was the Jericho Skull, which was featured in National Geographic Online and has had over 200,000 views. 3D models were also incorporated into an Oculus VR tour of the Egyptian gallery, letting people explore the museum virtually online. We've also experimented with 3D printing for education and outreach, and this includes objects for our handling desk for exhibitions, taking away the risk of damage to the actual objects from the collections. So I want to focus now on two case studies looking at research projects that bring together many of the different elements of digital research at the museum. Firstly, the African Rock Art Image Project, which is an archive of 30,000 digital images of often endangered rock art sites found across the continent of Africa. And these were donated to the museum for cataloguing and curation as born digital objects. The main portal to the collection is via the project's website, which is shown here, recently redeveloped to be more easily accessible on mobiles and in low bandwidth regions. So one of the challenges of this project has been, how do we give people further access to born digital objects with only images that exist in our collection? Once again, we decided to experiment with making 3D models, but this time only using archival images rather than images taken specifically for photogrammetry. You can see here that from only 12 images, um, you can produce a functional 3D model. And this is supposed to be an animation, so... It's trying to give you an idea of moving around the model, viewing it on Sketchfab. From this, we used 3D printing to create tactile rock art replicas for blind and partially sighted visitors to the museum, allowing them experience rock art in a way which would not otherwise be possible with only using the digital archive. We further experimented with our rock art collections to create an immersive visit to a rock art site in South Africa called Game Pass Salt. And for this project, we worked with the African Conservation Trust, a cultural heritage group that works closely with local communities in the region. They provided us with additional 360 degree imagery of the site, which we combined with the 3D models and images from our archive to create a virtual visit to the site. So this is what the VR looks like when you're looking for a Google Cardboard headset. And as you can see, you get to explore the rock art shelter with the art and look out over the landscape surrounding the site. We wanted to make it as accessible as possible by using inexpensive cardboard headsets and widely available mobile technology rather than a specific expensive VR kit. And the VR app is available free on the App Store and there is an online version as well on the project website. Okay. 
So we launched the VR experience in the Great Court of the British Museum and received some great feedback about the potential of using this technology for further explorations of our archaeological collections. Children took to the experience quite easily, as cardboard headsets are now widely used in schools, while adults tended to find it a bit more disorientating to get the hang of, so lots of things to consider for future development. We then decided to do one other immersive experience for the African Rock Art Project, which is a film looking at climate change in the Sahara and how this reflected in the rock art record. So we worked with the Green Sahara Project at King's College London, who provided us with past climactic and paleo-hydrological data, which we combined with the rock art data from our archive. And so here is the opening sequence from the film, which we recently launched, and which has received over 61,000 views on Facebook. And here is, an, oops, here is another sequence from one of the featured rock art sites um, showing the animation of a 3D model to illustrate the narrative of the film. So briefly, I want to look at one further project which is based out of the University of East Anglia, but using the British Museum archive and digital resources to look at the global importance of heritage sites in East Anglia, the ones that are listed here on the map. So for this project, we wanted to find an inventive way to pull together archival and archaeological resources, such as the materials from the Sutton Hoo archive shown here. Animation. Great. And we wanted to combine these with pre-existing digital resources, such as this 3D model of the Grimes Grave goddess and this older laser scan of the Greenwell Pit at Grimes Graves to tell a story about the heritage of East Anglia and global significance. What we came up with was a series of short films featuring each site and a connected digital education resource on the project's website. So here's a... Here's, here's the introductory film for the project. So I wanted to end on Dan Pett's favourite quote about digital output. Just because we create resources, it doesn't mean that the people will use them or even that your institution will appreciate all the time and effort you've put into it. We hope that this presentation has given a taster of some of the digital outputs we've employed to think creatively about how people can engage with archaeological research and museum collections. One of the major lessons we've learned is not just to create more digital assets, but think of new and innovative ways we can combine existing archives and digital content to create new and exciting things. Sadly, many large institutions do not understand or support the experimentative nature of much of this work, 
nor do they completely comprehend the great importance of engaging the public in the process in order to gain key project feedback. Equally, museums are endlessly concerned about losing control of their collections data and intellectual property, something which seems almost inevitable in this digital age. But increasing access accessibility to collections and data remains key. And we're hopeful to continue to open up greater avenues of research to most people possible. Thank you. Thank you.